Hello and welcome to another video in the series Learning to Drive with Gary Phillips. In this video we're going to cov uh, cover moving off and stopping. So imagine that we're parked on the left here and we want to move off. We're going to use a routine called POM, P-O-M, and that stands for prepare, observe and move. To prepare the car you would be in first gear with a little bit of gas and if we're uphill you'd find the biting point. Observations, we'd start with the left door mirror, the interior mirror, the road ahead, the right door mirror and the blind spot of your right shoulder at about 4 o'clock. Once you've checked around, you'd consider whether you need a signal. The signal isn't always necessary, it depends who's going to benefit. So if there's nobody to benefit, we wouldn't give the signal. In this case we've got some pedestrians around who would benefit, so we would give a right signal to move off. We'd also need to consider the timing of that signal. If there was a car approaching from behind that we were going to wait for and we weren't going to move off in front of it we wouldn't give a signal until it had gone because it would be confusing to that car so we'd wait until the traffic's gone if we've got a big enough gap uh, we, we would give a signal to tell the vehicles behind that we're going to move off before them so the timing of the signal is important and whether it's necessary or not we'd then to move off bring the clutch up a little bit as the car starts to move keep your feet still that just gives the engine um, and the clutch and the gearbox a chance to move the car away uh, and then once you've moved a few feet you can bring the clutch fully up nice and smoothly and it won't jerk or stall on you. As you're doing that we need to steer out into what we call the normal driving position which is about a metre from the kerb on most roads or about in the centre of your lane. To get into that position if you imagine when your steering wheel is straight that the top of the steering wheel is at 12 o'clock if you imagine it's like a clock so to get out there you won't need a lot of steering it's going to be about 5 past 12 and then 5 to 12 just to bring your car parallel and then 12 o'clock again to keep it straight and then we travel along in that normal driving position. We then need to consider how to park. So the first thing we need to think about um, is finding a safe, convenient and legal place to park. So we'd look for somewhere that's safe, not on a brow of a hill, on a bend, uh, somewhere that's convenient, not too close to a junction for example, you shouldn't park closer than 10 meters from a junction. Um, anywhere that would inconvenience anybody in front of somebody's driveway perhaps opposite other cars that would narrow the road those kind of situations where we wouldn't park and whether it's legal so any parking restrictions we're not allowed to park there that wouldn't be legal um, maybe yellow lines, zigzag lines, that kind of thing um, so consider whether it's going to be a legal place so scalp, a safe, convenient and legal place is what we're looking for when we're thinking of parking to get to that position we're going to use another routine called MSM probably the most common routine in driving so that's mirror signal and maneuver first of the mirrors we check the interior mirror first and then the left door mirror the interior mirror we always check first because we're looking for um, a true picture of what's behind us the interior mirror is flat glass and it shows us exactly the distance that things are behind us the exterior mirrors in this case the left door mirror we're going to check because we're going to move to the left is slightly convex, so that makes things look a bit further away than they actually are. So there could be a cyclist or something coming up the inside which, as we're slowing down, may be able to go faster than us, so we check that one. So mirrors, interior left, then again we consider the signal, whether it's necessary or not. Same rules apply, if there's nobody to benefit we wouldn't give that signal. The pedestrians in this case are behind us now, so we wouldn't need to give that signal for them, they wouldn't benefit. But if we did need a signal, we'd consider the timing of it. If you gave the signal here, for example, then it would be a little bit early and people might think you're going to turn into this junction. So you'd wait till you get past the junction and then give your signal to pull in after the junction. So in this case we're not given a signal. To manoeuvre into a parking position, we would again steer slightly left, steer slightly right, and then steer straight to bring us parallel to the kerb. And we'd aim to be uh, a couple of inches away from the kerb, not right up against it, but not too far out either so it's nice and neat against the kerb. To stop the car you would need the clutch and the brake. The brake normally you'd be braking first and then the clutch would go down. If you've done this in first gear and you're going quite slowly the clutch may need to go down before the brake otherwise it could stall the car. So the speed of the car is important to consider when we put the clutch down. Um, in general terms when you get to about three car lengths away from where you want to stop that's about when you would put the clutch down and you'd perhaps be doing about 10 miles an hour at that point so braking put the clutch down 
Once you've stopped, keep your feet still and then put the handbrake on, go into neutral and then you can rest your feet again. If you were to bring the clutch up before you put the handbrake on and go into neutral, then it would jerk forwards and stall the car. So it's important that after you've stopped, your feet stay still. And that's about all for moving off and stopping. I hope that's been helpful to you. See you next time.